Hello again, everybody. It's week two of our new exciting small group program, Strengthen Your Core. I hope you had a great first session and I hope you had a, a great uh, week of Lent. I wanted to tell you a funny story that uh, I remember when I was first ordained. My, uh, my mother, after I got ordained, she came up to me and made a point of saying to me, I hope you're not going to be one of those priests who puts everybody into small groups. She says, I hate it when they do that. And I kind of all have sort of the same kind of tension too, because you know it's not easy sometimes to, to get together in a group, but hopefully you noticed from, from last week that amazing things happen when people get into a small group and begin to share their faith. That's when we really have new insights. It never fails that for me when we're preparing for a Sunday and our Tuesday night group gets together and talks about the upcoming gospel, when I hear somebody else read it, and when I hear it in a different voice or somebody else comment on it, it gives me a whole new perspective on it, something that I, that I didn't see. So there's a real value to this. So if you're thinking maybe uh, you weren't sure if you wanted to come back again or something didn't go quite way, the, the way you thought it was going to go last week, I'm glad you came back and I'm glad you're going to do this again. Uh, this week we, we talk about hydrate because everybody says whenever you exercise, you've got to hydrate, right? It's no good. You've got to keep the water, the fluids coming into your body uh, or you're going to be dehydrated. And I think so much in our society is, is so much like that. Uh, we get dehydrated so quickly because of the things that, that feed us that don't really feed us. Things from the internet and the television, those things don't really nourish our body, but it's our faith that really does. We know that, a relationship with Jesus Christ. The gospel that we heard this, this Sunday is a, just a famous story about Jesus and the woman that he meets at the well, the Samaritan woman. I want you to know that actually this particular gospel and the next two weeks, these three gospels in themselves are part of what are called the, the gospels for the catechumenate. They're the Gospels for those who are going to be baptized. Uh, they're part of the cycle of readings that we get only every three years, but they're really, really beautiful. They're all about conversion and a deepening faith and a deeper awareness of who Jesus Christ is in our life. So as you discuss today that great Gospel that we've just heard, maybe you're already beginning to see how your relationship with Jesus or how you're beginning to see Jesus in a different way, uh, different than you did many years ago, or maybe even, who knows, just a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that relationship or that understanding of Jesus is growing in a deeper way. Hope you have a great week, a great discussion session this week, and a great week of Lent. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Sue, and this is my husband, Don. Hi. And um, we were just uh, listening to the gospel this week and had some thoughts. Um, I, myself, um, the Samaritan woman speaks to me uh, because in that, in that reading, God says, or Jesus says, he has life-giving water. And the woman says, where can I get this life-giving water? And to me, I think that, that speaks about, it speaks volumes. Because in life, we have so many things all set up and figured out. You know, we have, we have somebody to take care of our finances and we have somebody that helps us out um, you know with our health you know we have blood sugar issues or we want to get healthy or we want to go on a diet We've got it all figured out you know we we have somebody to help us out we have our doctors and we go to the gym and we work out and we get strong and try to take care of ourselves but then when it comes to your spirituality it's like it can it's it's just you need so much more in order to get through life and to deal with all the problems you know and I feel like when, when, when you really look at it, you're, you've got 168 hours in the week and you spend like maybe one of them at church and, and the rest of the time you're, you know, you're, just, you're just trying to deal with it and you're trying to struggle through and, and find something to inspire you and give you that strength. And, and I personally feel like um, you know, if, if you don't take care of that spirituality and maybe surround yourself with people uh, who, can, who can give you some strength or you know, bounce ideas off or, or take the dog for the walk and pray on a daily basis or find that saint who speaks to you, you know, or gives you that strength, it just dries up, you know, it's like she was thirsty, you know, the Samaritan woman was thirsty and I feel like in life we, we can be so spiritually thirsty and we just, we just let that well dry up unless you, you know, unless you really stay on top of it and surround yourself with people and make it like a focal part of your life instead of just something offhand. Uh, that, that's kind of what I, what I got out of it. What did you get out of it? Well, I found that when I was younger, I was a pretty selfish person and kind of backburnered my faith, my religion, and didn't really pay too much attention to it. It was more for 
me. What am I getting out of this? What am I doing? How am I? I didn't worry about how I treated people. I worried about how I felt and what I wanted to do. What I got out of that reading was when Jesus walked up there, he could see right through her. He, he knew all her faults, all her sins, all everything about her. And he was still willing to offer her the water and and re-life just to, to treat her with respect and to treat her like a person. And I found within my faith and getting more involved in some of the church things and, and going to Mass and, and really paying attention to the readings, I can look at people, I handle people differently. When, when somebody comes up, I realize every person I'm talking to, whether I just met them or whether I've worked with them for a long time, they all have a pro they all have their own problems in their own life. And and they're that one minute or two minutes they're standing there talking to you. You don't know what's going on and how they're doing. And and I need to step back and I can honestly say, you know, I feel differently when I'm talking to people now. I can I can look at them and, and realize, okay, they're they're not actually handling this situation properly, but they could have so much going on in their life right now and it's not about me. I need to listen to them and, and, and try to treat them with respect and know that that's just the way they are at this particular moment. And getting involved when you go to church and you listen to the readings and you pay attention and it, it, it helps calm me inside and helps me to relate to other people more easily. Yeah, be a nicer person. Be a, be a little <laughs> bit nicer yeah, person. I, I, I know what you mean and I feel like, you know, it's that, it's that it's that thirst that we have that 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 nourishes us and makes us, you know, stronger. And um, going to church and building your faith, I think that that that's like so key in in getting through life as a nice person, and also as a person who has something inside to give to others. And it makes you it makes you feel good to do good. Yeah. And the more you can do to make somebody feel better, makes you feel better inside. Even little things. You just it, it, it makes life smoother and, and lets you know that you know you're working toward a much bigger picture. Yeah. And you know this is just a, a stopping point. And you can make it miserable or you can make it cheerful. Yep. Agreed.